huge news to report. The first people infected by COVID, the patients zero, were in fact Chinese scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Moreover, these three scientists were engaged in gain of function research on SARS like coronaviruses when they fell ill. This is according to new reporting from Michael Schellenberger, Matt Taibbi, and Alex Gutentag. Michael Schellenberger joins us now to explain more. Thank you so much for joining us, Michael. Good to be with you guys. So lay it out for us. Uh, what is the evidence here that the initial infection was, in fact, among the pe very people you would expect to be most likely to be first infected if it, the COVID was a result of a lab leak incident? Sure. So we have it from uh, multiple people in the U.S. government, very careful not to identify these people very nervous and afraid this information is classified, which I don't understand why. And we don't know for how long, but we think for a very, for a while now, uh, maybe since the beginning. But yes, these three researchers uh, include Ben Hu uh, and two others who were directly involved working with the uh, coronaviruses that are very similar to SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID. And uh, they were working in that part of the lab for Xi Jinping, who's the scientist that headed up the gain of function research. So when we told experts that had that had been people arguing that there was a, a serious chance that it came from a lab, when we told them it was Ben Hu, who was one of three patients zero, as we call the first people to get the disease, they were nobody was surprised, and they were just kind. Of, they were actually more angry that it had taken so long for this information to get out, which I think is a big part of the story too, which is why, you know, why was this classified? Why had, why did it take so long to know this? Why did we have to be the ones that found this out? Um, why is the government keeping so many secrets from us? So I think there's a bunch of big questions here, but I do feel like we are now at a place of, at least for me, 100% came from the lab and we know who got infected first. And, and tell uh, the audience uh, more about who is Ben who and his connection to uh, to research done on bats and coronaviruses, et cetera? Well, so Ben Hu um, is sort of the number two under Xi Jinping, who's the person uh, that heads up the gain of function research for the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Ben Hu's name is he's the lead author on some of the most important uh, academic publications and studies. Uh, Ping Yu is another author of these studies. So it's it's just sort of exactly what you would predict. The people that were messing around with this virus, that were looking to insert the furin cleavage site into a, a spike protein to in, that would have the result of increasing infectiousness, they got sick first. I mean, it's just um, there's actually something that's totally not shocking about it. The most shocking thing about it is why did it have to come out this way? Why did it take three years, three and a half years? Um, who knew? When did they know? Why was everybody so scared to tell us? Um, it's a bad, this is a, this was a big cover up that was going on. And it, we know it involved the Chinese government. Um, why was the United States government not reviewing this? Who knew about this? And why were they spreading disinformation suggesting that anybody who even raised this issue was engaged in a conspiracy theory? In fact, uh, there was a conspiracy, which was to keep this information secret. And um, it should make us angry because had we had this information earlier, obviously we would have saved a lot of time talking about raccoon dogs and penguins. But there also might have been something we could have done at the beginning of the pandemic had we known where it came from. Michael, this is very explosive indeed. You're saying that but for a whistleblower effectively telling you that the government knew that the first people who got COVID were working at the Wuhan Virology Lab, we would still be making these guesses about origin. But let me ask you this, this question for any skeptics. You know, how does one determine who was the first to contract COVID-19? Because isn't part of the theory of the zoonotic origin that the zoonotic origin also could have taken place at the at the wet markets that were very close to the Wuhan Institute of Virology or the uh, bat cave collection that was happening for the purposes of the uh, Wuhan lab of virology. And that the there's a bit of a chicken under the egg situation. Did someone from the lab visit the wet market? Were they Did they contract it when um, getting samples from the bats in the caves nearby? How does one really determine from a scientific perspective who 
patient zero really is. Well, that nobody would say. Every uh, the people we spoke with were very nervous about this. It took a lot of work, a lot of trust building. It took, frankly, a lot of other stories that we had done with whistleblowers recently. Uh, um, also, the work with the Twitter files for people to trust us with this information. Uh, but when we pressed one source um, about how certain they were, they said a hundred percent. And so. I think reading between the lines, and again, nobody told me, I think that they had very good information. Uh, and I don't know if it was human intelligence or signal intelligence or what it was, but apparently it's very good information. And that's, I mean, part of what the folks were very nervous about is not revealing how they had that information. And, and could this be the information that has led, because obviously with the Energy Department and the FBI have said they lean in favor of the lab leak theory, is this because of this, you know, this information, they have seen information that has caused them to make these determinations. This information is not public yet. Uh, like you, I, I think I, I absolutely believe it should be public so the American people can, you know, decide whether the government is making the right um, determination based on the information it has. But is, is this, uh, do, you, do you know whether this is what has caused those government agencies to make that determination? I, I I don't I don't know exactly uh, the answer to your question, but we do know that the uh, director of national intelligence is supposed to come out with a new summary of the intelligence on June 18th. And so there was a major piece in The Times of London that cited many unnamed State Department sources. Um, we have not revealed even which branch of the federal government we have our information from, but it, but we do know that other reporters are working on the story. So I get the sense that there are people in the government that have been pushing very hard to get this information out and are frustrated that it's taken so long and that are maybe a little worried that the DNI report won't be as complete as it should be. Um, I would also say that the FBI earlier this year, the director of the FBI, Christopher Ray, said something like, we have known it came from the lab for some time, I believe, or for a long time, which I we know at least, I mean, January 15th, the State Department nearly came out and said that that this is a bit, our story has the names of the patients and is very definitive. The State Department statement on January 15th, 2021 said that people got sick uh, uh, in the lab. And and we know that that document, I can assure, I know for a fact that that was being pushed uh, well before January 15th, 2021. So we're talking about 2020 here. So, yeah, I mean, I just think it's, I mean, I'm flabbergasted that they sat on this for so long. I don't know why. Ostensibly that Fauci and others said that they didn't want to, they wanted to go away from this with some of the, the offending the Chinese. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't know, but I do think things are coming to a head and we're going to see a fair amount more in the next few days. Michael, has there been or will there be any effort to reach out and talk to the patients to try to corroborate at very least the timing of their having contracted COVID? Yeah, we did. I We emailed and made phone calls to all of the, the three uh, uh, patients, zero as they're called. We also put in phone calls and emails to the Wuhan Institute of Virology, to National Institutes of Health, um, to Peter Dazak with the EcoHealth Alliance. We don't know what they knew, but nobody got back to us. Uh, nobody responded, and they didn't respond to the Times of London either. Mm. Mm. Well, this is a very, very uh Terrific reporting. Uh, thank you so much, Michael. It, it sounds, I hope, that you know, the dam is breaking and that we'll soon all be able to access uh, whatever the government knows on this subject. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys.